There was one. Merging? Yeah, there was one case yeah. where I created the new ASIN. It was a complete copy, and then they said details don't match. We can't merge it. I was like. <laughs> Selling on Amazon is not passive income, which is why you're here listening to me. My name is Stephen Pope, and I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. In clips like you'll see today, we talk to Amazon sellers and ask them about the pains they experience. We offer solutions. We talk about PPC, SEO, design, and catalog troubleshooting. Enjoy. Robert, welcome back to the My Amazon Guy show. How's it going? Good, good. Um, I had a lot, well, I had a 50% success rate with merging ASINs to change UPCs. <laughs> all right, that's about much that's higher, about normal. Much higher than uh, ticketing Amazon through all the different venues. Um, there was one, merging? Yeah, there was one case yeah. where I created the new ASIN, it was a complete copy, and then they said, details don't match, we can't merge it. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't check it, got it. <laughs> hey, you know, all I want for Christmas this year, Robert, is functional Amazon seller support. We're we're actually going to make a parody video that's going to come out of the next week, where that's where we're all singing a jingle about yeah. functional Amazon seller support. So and, yeah, they someday. sent me a list of the attributes they said did not match, and like half of them were not visible on the category listing report or the individual template for that product feed type. I was like, how could they not match? They're not visible. You couldn't possibly submit them. They're not, I don't know. I what, I got one idea for you. When you go to make the duplicate uh, SKU, maybe make it manually uh, by hitting the copy listing function. And then that oh. way it'll match those fields uh, by default. Ah, that's a good, that's a good, I'll have to try that. Let me make a note of that. Uh, yeah. Okay. On to and, my and, actual question. And, and and before you, before you jump in that, I'll, I'll double double hit on the can duplicate skew me, thing. So so duplicating a button? skew for an ASIN uh, can be done for a variety of reasons. So what Robert and I were just talking about is duplicating an ASIN, not a skew, to basically change the UPC over because of all the GS1 issues. Separate from that, though, uh, if you go to any one of my listings right now, uh, the Grogu Cup included. And you can purchase from us two ways. You can purchase it both through FBM and FBA. And that's because we have a duplicate SKU on the same uh, FBA, uh, same ASIN. So if we go back over to my inventory page, I'll do that real quick and kind of show what this looks like on the back end. So we just stocked out at FBA, right? So we got hundred more inbound, but you know, we're, we're blowing through these. And, and so we have the same ASIN right here, and we have an FBA SKU and an FBM SKU. And we just use suffixes to tell them apart and keep everything else the same. This is data management 101. Everybody needs to be doing this, especially when things are going crazy. So we got a top 3000 kitchen product right there. Big, big winner. Uh, but if we needed to change a UPC, uh, here's what I was specifically mentioning to Robert is to come in here and hit the copy listing button and then fill in the new UPC. And hopefully all of those catalog things will, will match up accordingly. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll have to try that. Um, so my question now is, I have a, uh, I have a brand, a Legacy ASIN, owned by a different brand. That brand was acquired by, uh, by another brand. I have both GS1 certs. Um, I have documentation that you know, shows the brand was acquired by the previous owners, et cetera. They've accepted it for other reasons. I would like to get the brand name changed on the Legacy ASIN. Um, I mean, I know I could just jump right in, start ticketing and all that. I mean, I'm sure, but I'm sure there's a, um, you know, uh, is more systematic way. Is the original brand uh, trademarked and brand registered? Yes, both are. Okay. I would recommend unenrolling brand registry for the old brand and then filing, um, filing the ticket for the brand name change and doing a template file upload. And, and do it as rapidly as possible because if you don't have a brand uh, brand registered in the system, hijacking seems to show up a lot more. Um, so so your risk, you know, you gotta you gotta jump on that as quickly as possible. Uh, but I've never seen somebody get hijacked in a matter of a couple of days. Usually, it's the hijackers are pulling up old listings that aren't brand registered when you're right. out of stock. Those this are typically is the attack. I've never thought about doing. How would I go about deregistering from brand registry? <laughs> So let's let's go into 
brand registry and we'll look at it together. So, so you sign in, of course, you do all that s- sort of stuff. Click on the brand registry button. And then in the back, um, you can go to the settings. And then actually, I actually think I have a video on this. Let's see if I do. My Amazon guy. I don't think I've seen a video on Enroll on <laughs> Brand Registry. Pretty sure I do. Here we go. Here it is. How to unenroll a brand. Oh. Okay. And I need the actual video link. There's transferring a trademark. Where's the unenroll one? Well, I saw the I saw the podcast audio. Yeah, every time I see your podcast audio, I try to go look for the YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the podcast audios outrank the videos, uh, unfortunately. But this this is the audio version on on Apple there. So I'll put that into the chat. You can check that out. Uh, see if you can find the actual video clip. Uh, but but essentially, on the back end of brand registry, uh, you click a couple of buttons. Uh, it's, it's really seamless. It goes right through. You can then immediately, uh, make the changes and we've had people get their brand name changed in under 48 hours, pretty consistently. What, what do you uh, mean you can go in and make the change? You can go into seller central and just submit a brand change literally. So, so there's, there's three ways, uh, that I'd recommend way number one after, and this is all after unenrolling the original brand way. Number one is to do a template upload just like you would any other data change and do a f- full template upload. Sometimes you need to, do, do, need to do the deletion, although I don't like doing the deletion, especially since you lose sales during that time. So step one, template upload file. Step two, uh, you can then start filing brand registry tickets uh, and changing the attribute there because it's not a brand registered uh, attribute anymore and you're going from an unregistered brand to a registered brand, uh, they will accept those tickets. And sometimes you do have to escalate those uh, and whatnot. And then the third way is the seller central ticket, which is basically the same method as the brand registry one, but because it's not brand registered, you can also do it through um, a ticket through troubleshooting um, data template upload issues. Oh, I can uh, just give them the batch ID and give them the batch ID, tell them what you're trying to do. Um, generally, you don't even need to tell them why. And, you know, if you get the right rep, you can get them on the phone and they'll do it for you right there. Yeah. And, and sometimes it takes a little bit of escalation, um, goes to the catalog team. You can no longer talk to the brand registry team directly, but the troubleshooting catalog team, you can. Uh, and so right now, I'd say changing a brand name is probably a seven out of 10 on difficulty. Uh, parentage might be an eight out of 10 trying to troubleshoot parentage specifically. And then a UPC issue would be like the 11 out of 10 issue. Um, so it's not as bad as it used to be. Brand name changes used to be very, very difficult. Uh, Adam Heiss and I did a video series about how he did it for his brand. I think it's all coming up on two years now. It was, it was a 10 out of 10 back then today. Brand name changes are actually significantly more easier. Uh, once we learn that process. Okay, I'll have to uh, have to give it a try because uh, I feel like I'm going to have difficulty because we're currently not the only seller. Uh, we're getting their distribution under control. Um, you know, I, people uh, go crazy when the brand's not registered and they do silly things like a point one pack, point two pack. <laughs> You've seen those, yeah. Um, those attributes are a pain in the butt to fix. Uh, generally speaking, it's because of another seller contribution. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's usually not Amazon's catalog team messing it up, believe it or not. I know it's hard to believe, yeah. but <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Most of, most of the difficulties I've run into are third party contributions. Yes. Um, and we're working through getting Amazon to, you know, basically ticket to contribute through our catalog and then we have control and we can change things and things like that. But, uh, um, it sometimes becomes very difficult to know if they gave you a true answer like that list of random fields that probably are not really filled in that they say don't match or they actually filled in and I have to make the match. I mean, it's sometimes it's a guessing game because sometimes I think the agent just copies something, paste it to try to end the case. They do. Yeah. There, there, there is a culture issue at Amazon solar support. It's a top down issue and there's, there is not a lot of transparency. There's not a lot of Q and a going on. Uh, right. and it's, it's really bad. So I, when I get bad answers, I always start with, no, your answer was not helpful. 
Um, no, you do not understand my problem. Please escalate this to someone who can. Do not copy and paste a template response. That that unfortunately <laughs> probably start. never helps. But <laughs> I, I, I mean, I usually start with this was not helpful. Please escalate because I think language yep. like that um, directly contradicting and saying the word escalate triggers something. Definitely saying it, the word escalate triggers something. Usually, it does. <laughs> uh, also, the simple the simple fact that you replied to the case and it got um, redone also triggers it as well. So if you're going three, four deep uh, with with a message, a case going back and forth, that will trigger an escalated review from a manager. Yeah, that's usually the route I go. I keep it as terse and short as possible without being personally rude. But if they definitively that, yes. didn't do anything, I just say your answer was not helpful. You do not understand the problem. Escalate this to someone else. And you have to say escalate. Don't pat. Don't. I used to say just you know send this to someone else and like that. But if you don't use the word escalate, es- escalate's a good word. I, I would endorse that methodology. Um, and and by the way, guys, uh, we we are looking for more guests to come on behind the scenes. We got another one that just joined us. Uh, we'll we'll get to Brian next. He's going to be our next guest here. Uh, so if you guys want to join us, click on the Streamyard link. We have a, we have a lot of people who have asked questions in the chat. We'll see if we can fill you guys in if we don't have other guests coming on camera. But we are prioritizing on camera guest interviews. All right, Robert, thank, thank you, you for coming on the show today. Uh, great questions week. about UPCs, <laughs> brand name changes, and issues along those lines. Slam that like and subscribe button and join me every Thursday, noon Eastern Standard Time, where you can watch Amazon sellers come on camera and ask me literally any question live. We'll see you then.